Let's begin by simplifying the neck and the shoulders into three building blocks. Whenever we do that, we get something like this. The first building block is going to be a cylinder. That's the upper part of our neck. The second building block is going to be a tapered cylinder, which is wider at the base. And the third building block is simply going to be a block to represent the shoulders and the torso. Whenever we are trying to create a collar, what we want to do is to cover this middle block. We're going to call this middle block the transition block because it allows the cylinder to transition into the torso and the shoulders. Now, most neck points on shirts and jackets find their location right at the base of this transition block. So if I would draw out a neck curve, center front or center back, shoulder and armhole, you would see that the neck point is right at the base of our building block. Let's go ahead and try to create a pattern which is going to turn into our color for this neck. We would begin with a straight rectangular strip, just as our starting point. Whenever we wrap this around the transition block, what we would notice is that we have these gaps right at the top of the collar. Why is that? Well, the answer is simple. Whenever you wrap around a straight rectangular strip around itself, it's just going to result in a cylinder. And the sides of that cylinder are straight. But we don't want that. We want a tapered cylinder. So what do we do? Well, imagine we would pinch away and cut out these surpluses that we have at the top. If we would translate that action into our pattern, we would have these V-cuts. Removing the V-cuts and closing our strip is going to result in a curved strip. Whenever you wrap this curved strip around itself, it's going to make a tapered cylinder, which is exactly what we need to cover the transition block right here of our simplified body. This curved strip becomes the stand of our collar. Now, our collar has two pieces to it. The first one is the stand. The second piece is the fall. So, a two-piece collar is also referred to as a stand and a fall collar. What is the fall? Well, the fall is what you are seeing here on my shirt. The stand is hidden underneath it. So, the fall covers the stand. It falls over the, the stand. If I would overlap the two, you would just see the exact same pattern. But the fall is just a little bit wider to cover this bottom edge of the stand. This bottom edge of the stand is what is sewn to the neck circle of our jacket. If I would draw out the patterns of these two separately, we would have the stand here. We would call this the edge of stand. And this line here is going to be called the break line because that's the line from which the fall breaks and falls over the stand. And if I would draw out the pattern for the fall, you'll see exactly the same pattern, just a little bit wider, again, with a break line, because they are going to be joined right on the same seam, so they share that seam together. And here we're going to call this the edge of fall. Most of you have seen a stand and a fall color in a pattern cutting book or on, I don't know, Pinterest or something. And what you've seen most of the time is, for example, a shirt color. Here we have the stand, buttonhole, and then the fall is usually mirrored upwards like this. And depending on the design, it's shaped according to whatever line we have. So, what you see here is a shirt color, and I'm sure that you can see the resemblances between what I've created here. The only difference is that the fall here is flipped upwards. But whenever they are joined, the fall just falls down and covers the stand. Now, something I have to note is that these edges of the fall can be shaped to whatever design specification you have. It won't affect the shape of the tapered cylinder. So, you can create whatever design you want, 
if you want to get fancy, and it won't affect the technical structure of the color. However, if you start to mess around with these brake line curves, then you are changing the severeness of this taper. Before we focus on the severity of the taper, let's just recap everything in the real world and see how this scenario plays out with actual real materials. So, we are at the mannequin and I want you to do two things for me. First of all, ignore this seam that we have right on the neck because that was put by the company that made this mannequin and it's not relevant to my explanation. The second thing is to look at this green strip that I've sewn on the fabric and that is our transition block. Now, this is of course a mannequin with a lot of curves and you may wonder where the transitional block on your mannequin or on your neck would be. My answer is there is a range. Sometimes it's slightly lower, sometimes it's slightly higher. Usually, on average, it's right in the middle where the neck curves into the shoulder. Having said that, let's begin by covering our transition block with our first pattern, which is our straight strip. Whenever we align the edge of our stand with the base of the transition block, like that, what you will notice, first of all, is that the stand is standing straight. And there is, like I mentioned, those big surpluses that we have right on top of the collar. It's here on the sides and on the back. This is not because I'm holding it loosely. If I would hold it tight, the pattern would simply just fade away, drift away from the actual curve. So aligning it with the curve results in these surpluses. If I would pinch all of these surpluses out and create a new pattern, what I would do is create this new pattern. Okay, now when I wrap this around, because we have created a curve, it fits nice and tight around the neck. Here you can see the tapered effect. It's narrower at the top and wider at the base. Now, if we go and add the fall to it, we will end up with a two-piece collar, which is a stand and a fall. And because these two have the exact same shape, aligning the collar now with our transition block again results in a tapered cylinder. So, we have done what we had to do. Now, I want you to pay attention to one other thing. Here, we have a straight line and then we have a break and it angles into the shoulder. However, whenever you look at our mannequin, it has a curve. How can we create a smooth curve on the surface of our collar? Well, so far we have learned about relative length and surfaces. This is a surface with a negative curve. It is concave and convex at the same time. So what we have to do is to take our two-piece collar and add additional length here because a negative surface requires the addition of a wedge or the stretching out of the iron. And so as this goes lower into the negative curve, it requires more and more length right on the edge here. So if I would make snips into the fall and then place this on top of the neck, you would see that not only do we have a tapered cylinder, but we also have a tapered cylinder with a curve right on the surface. The higher I go, the further away I go from the negative curve, and the less these wedges open. The lower I go, the further I go into the negative surface, and that opens up the wedges a lot more. So, if you understood what I just demonstrated, along with the examples I gave you here, it's safe to say that you understand the fundamentals of colors, and you can use that knowledge for all different types of color styles that you may be working on. Now, let's relate what we learned to the actual color of the jacket that we're about to make. We're planning to make the most comprehensive series on tailoring that has ever existed, available for the entire world. We can never develop a deep understanding of our surroundings, of the world, of our life, of ourselves, 
if we never ask why. Why is this? Why on earth? Why? 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 Why would someone... It already looks like a dress. Every single step is formulated and clearly articulated. Di 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 direction. My name is Reza. This was today's lesson. I look forward to seeing the next one. Ciao.